Well, it's been quite a summer. Now I can go back to listening to audio. What the hell? It's not working, damn it. My remote's not working. Oh, shit. Hello again, Lou Hamilton from Audible Elegance in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are located a few doors north of the Montgomery Inn and across from the Montgomery Cyclery. We do work on X, and formerly known as Twitter, and Instagram, and um, all sorts of sources, and we do the blog as well. Tonight I want to talk about one of the terrors of coming back to listen to your music system. Uh, it might be your video system, but not too much in that which is something you haven't used all summer because you've been enjoying outside and you come back in and you just pick up the remote and you hit power, nothing happens. You hit power, 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 nothing's happened. Then you kind of go, oh, I don't know what's wrong. Maybe I need batteries. And so you open up the battery clip and you've got that. Now, the first temptation of many people is that you do all the wrong things. What I'm first going to do is to remove the batteries from the spring loading. And typically you have a spring load on the negative, a flat clip on the positive, come to the flat tip, push the battery back into the sp spring, Take battery one into the garbage can, and we're going to turn this around. We're going to take battery two out into the garbage can. Now, um, well, I had, uh, there were Duracells in here, and you can see what's going on now. Uh, Duracells and uh, some of the real brand name batteries are um, exceptionally good in a couple of different ways. It takes a long, long time before they begin to leak. Uh, I really like that. Um, the worst case scenarios that I run into are um, things like batteries. Um, Maker's Mark out of Sam's Club and Costco has their own house brand too. And once those go dead, they're notorious for dumping, um, leaking right away. But more importantly is that when they leak, they actually do substantial damage to the metal surfaces that are supposed to be part of the contacts. So now that we've got it at this point and you can see it, the usual temptation um, is, you know, we're gonna use, you know, some form of liquid. No, we're gonna use some form of electro wash. Well, good luck because if you don't melt the plastics, you don't wanna use that. And here's another brand. And then there are some village idiots who go out there and they just try to use deoxid straight out. Now, deoxid is a fine product. But at this stage, this is the last thing you do. So we're going to keep that on the counter. The rest of it is garbage. And what I'm going to do is show you how to begin to salvage your remote control. Because if your product has been discontinued for a while, um, you're going to wind up paying $30 to $60 for um, an original manufacturer OEM remote. And that's even if it's there. You might find some sort of uh, knock off out of China, um, which may or may not work well for you, but we're going to talk about salvaging a remote. Now, normally I do this over at the kitchen sink at home, but I don't have a kitchen sink here, so I'm going to do it over a paper towel. And the first thing I'm going to do is just simply tap it gently, and I'm going to try to knock out the uh, leakage as best I can. Now I see what I've got, and I'm gonna take a toothbrush, um, preferably not your roommates or anyone else's, <laughs> you wanna get a new one, and you just simply start rubbing it in there and trying to get the rest of that contaminant out of there. And you'll find in most cases that it will do quite a fine job in getting that contaminant out of there. You may also wind up having to use um, some sort of sharp object or a very fine screwdriver and going in there and just loosening out some of the stuff that you can't 
get easily with a toothbrush. And so that's what I'm doing is I'm going in here and I'm looking at it and getting that out. Because you can't leave it in there. It's going to cause problems. Now, we have a major portion of it out. Again, do not use a fluid because this stuff will dissolve and create more problems than you can imagine because most remotes are not sealed. And so when you start putting water in there, well, guess what? It starts going into all these little cavities and actually can get into the board itself. You don't want to do that. So now we've got, you know, quite a bit of this out. Uh, if you have uh, compressed air after you've loosened everything, you may consider blowing it out. Um, but you got to be careful that you're not blowing it back into the remote itself because, again, we have these gaps. So that's the reason I like to use a toothbrush because I have control. Now, as you can see, if you look at the springs, we don't have the springs rusting or corroded. And um, they're certainly oxidized. But if I were using um, those off brands, you would oftentimes find um, these surfaces um, highly corroded. In this early um, remote, rather than having a steel plate, they actually use a little wire to receive the positive tip. And so I can look at that and say, it's good. It's not rusted up. Now, there's a little bit of rust on that one, okay? So we're not going to go there quite yet. Now, depending upon the degree of battery leakage and how severe it was and what batteries you had in it, um, you may or may not need to open the remote itself. And each remote is a little different. They're normally not um, glued together. But they actually have little clips. And so you carefully use the tele telephone people or the um, I, uh, the portable phone people have these little tools that you come right down the edge and you simply find the points where the clip releases and you open the remote up. You may or may not break one. Okay, that can happen. But that allows you to have access um, to the, the entire remote. Uh, sometimes the boards are screwed down, unscrew it. Um, the rubber plate will, or the push buttons will come away with the face plate or you may have to lift it off. And you'll actually be able to look at the contacts itself. 95% of the time, are, they're all right. Um, the only exception is when the remote not only has been left with batteries in it, but somebody spilled a drink on it. And that can create its own little ha havoc too. So I've had to take remotes apart and do it. At this point... Um, you have a couple different options. Um, this remote, you know, it's an old Rotel remote, RR930, and, and it's beaten up. So to me, it doesn't even have value on eBay, so I'm not going to go to any extent. Um, if somebody wants me to go into a, a real teardown of a remote, I'll do it for you. But you got to write me because I'm not going to do it voluntarily. So now that I've got the contamination away, yeah, a little more here. This is where a substance like deoxit comes in handy, okay? They make a spray and they also make a liquid. Uh, in situations like this, I much prefer the liquid because I can control what's going on. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I had to grab a couple of my fun little tools called swabs on um, sticks. Um, you can use Q-tips as well. But one of the things you want to make sure of is to put your finger on it and spin it the direction that the cotton was put on so you make it real, real tight. Um, you don't want those fibers wandering around in there. They're not going to be your friend. Now, you can go about this two different ways, and I'm going to do the springs differently at each end and the metal bars. I'm going to put a little drop of the deoxid on it. Um, it's nice to let it set for a little bit, so it really does its job. I'm just speeding up the process here. The other way, you've seen I've done it here, is to put 
the deoxide itself on the Q-tip. And then you go in and you start rubbing all of the surfaces um, so that no part of it is left untreated. And sometimes when you're doing this um, with the Q-tips, um, you'll see that, you know, it's not necessarily coming back, you know, with the color pink. You'll actually see some metal oxidation on it. And um, you're doing yourself some good. I take the time to swab down a little bit of the inside. So if I've got any um, corrosive uh, material left there that I haven't blown out, and I didn't blow this one out, um, that I'm actually mopping it up and also neutralizing it. So this is a case, I did this intentionally. You see how this is all spun apart because I didn't tighten this one down. Uh, and this is true on Q-tips and everything else. The more you tighten it down, the better off you are. Depending upon the diameter, you might actually take the time. Hey, we'll do that. Um, you'll take the time to actually take some of the cotton off so that the diameter that you're working with is smaller. So now I've tightened this one down, and you can see I've made the head much smaller. And then I'm going to go back in and finish my mop up. Um, deoxid is a substance that... Um, at least this version, the D5, or um, this is the DL100, D100L. Um, it's meant to be applied, but then wiped off. You don't want to leave goo in there. So at this point, um, in terms of the battery terminations, uh, I'm frankly good to go. And so in many cases, this will be enough to resurrect your remote. Um, if I get a, a really bad remote, uh, which requires a teardown, um, and if people ask for it, you know, I'll do a, a full uh, dissection of a remote and getting into it. Um, you know, th there isn't any sort of guarantee of how it goes because some of the remotes are clipped. Occasionally, you'll find screws inside that you've got to release first so that the back plate and the front plate will actually separate. Some have... Um, clips at the end. And that's just simply how they're snapped together for the most part. But that's, uh, that's what you need to do. So if you go to use your system and it doesn't work and you open up that battery hatch and suddenly discover hell, well, at least I've given you a start of how to do it. But it's a toothbrush, folks. It's not water. Um, it's not, you know, a solvent that you spray in there. That's just going to make things worse. So there we are. Good luck.